The Lobo Coaches Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Hello again, Lobo fans. Welcome on set. Another edition of your Lobo Coaches Show. I'm your host, Robert Portnoy, with the head football coach at UNM, Danny Gonzalez. Coach G, it was a loss at Texas A&M, but a, a terrific experience for your team. What were your primary takeaways from the game against the Aggies? We need to believe in what we're doing. Um, I, don't, I said it after the game to the media. I don't think that we went in there with the right mindset. I don't think we went in there believing that we were going to win the game. Uh, I thought we were a little tentative at the beginning. I mean, I'll use the word scared. I mean, I thought they were more aggressive than us at the very beginning, and we were down 14 points with 10 minutes to go in the first quarter. And when you give yourself that kind of a hole, it's awful hard to be competitive. So mindset, and it's something that you talked about throughout the entire week leading up to the game, that you want your team to go in and believe that it can win, but it's not something that can be manufactured. How does a, a Lobo team get to that point? I think there were some, some things that happened on Saturday that showed them that they can compete with anybody. Um, Texas A&M needed some style points for the CFP, and they were trying to score more than 34 points, I promise you that. They left their starters in until the last series. So our guys competed, and we showed them there's different times that we had success out there. But when you don't believe that you're good enough to beat them, you're not going to have much of a chance. The attitude should be those guys over there, they have no idea what they're in for. Coach, you mentioned the 14 points that AM scored very quickly at the start of the game. But from that point forward, it felt like your defense competed extremely well. And Coach Fisher, AM's coach after the game, said he thought that your defense was tougher than his offense. You know, in the first two plays, they got 140 yards total offense and two touchdowns. After that, they had roughly 300 yards total offense. They scored 10 points in the second quarter and 10 points in the third. Um, I thought we, we played them okay at that point. They had a hard time protecting the quarterback. That's, that's probably why they didn't get as many points as they wanted because they couldn't stand back there and throw it and pick us apart in coverage. Early on, they could because we were so soft. Once we realized we could cover them on defense, it was not a big deal. Protecting the quarterback was an issue on both sides of the ball, and this was the first time that Terry Wilson was under duress a lot, mm -hmm. wasn't it? I thought the old line, I mean, th their defensive line is really good. Uh, their defense is really good. I mean, they're the number one defense in the country right now, um, partly because they held us to 122 yards. That helps. But I thought the speed of it uh, was a little bit fast for the Luke Wysongs, the Manny Little Greens. Luke Wysong is going to be a great player around here. I think his whole life he's been so much faster than everybody he's played against here in, in New Mexico high school football that he tried to outrun him to the side yesterday where he could have cut it up a few times, got some extra yards, and as the game went on, he got better at it. So it was a good learning experience for him. So he felt like he could turn the corner when he had in his past, maybe against the A&M athletes he wasn't able to. But I wanted to ask you this as well because uh, it felt like there were fewer receivers running free for the Lobo offense this week than there had been the first couple of weeks. Um, certainly the defensive backs for A&M are better, but were they not able to uncover as well this week, or was it something schematic? I think a combination of both. I mean, obviously those guys were really good players, and they did a good job of, of covering our guys. But we could have done some things as we looked at afterwards schematically to give ourselves a little bit better chance. When we spread them out, we had more success running the football. And if we would have done that a little bit more, it probably could have been a little bit different. One of the guys who had that success was Aaron Dumas, your true freshman running back, and there was one series in particular where he was terrific. Oh, I thought he played I mean, right there in the second half. I thought he played really good. He was hitting the hole hard. Um, the, now the offensive line blocked him better. Um, we had more guys outside the box, and we had a little bit of success. All right, the Lobos go to Texas A&M to take on the Aggies. They've been there in 2017. New Mexico and Coach G play at Kyle Field. We look at first-half highlights next. The Lobo Coaches Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back on your Lobo Coaches Show with head football coach at UNM, Danny Gonzalez. I'm Robert Portnoy. Coach G, let's get right into first half highlights. The Lobos and A&M from Kyle Field in College Station. You know what a beautiful venue it was, and, and I'm excited to go back in 2023, and I believe we'll have the right attitude when we go back. Uh, here we start off on offense. First play, I got a little excited. I mean, that's a good job by Brooker right there. A little flat out, pass out in the flat and got some positive yards. That was about the only positive yards we had for a little while. Uh, this is atrocious. We need to fix this. I've, I've said it for three weeks now, so obviously we're not coaching it well enough. We're not, we don't have the right guys on there. Now, Anaya Smith is, was a great player. Did a great job with the punt returns, but we got to do a better job. I mean, Austin Cook saved a touchdown right there, but we're giving them the ball at the 40-yard line. And then we're very, like I said, we were timid. That's the very first play of the game. Dante's supposed to be in man coverage. He's got about an eight yard cushion. Just not something we'd done the first two weeks. We were just a little bit intimidated by their speed. And then right here, we get blocked. 
we're, we're not running hard enough, and in three plays they score a touchdown. That, that just, that, that's ridiculous. It can't happen. Your offense had started off so quickly in the first two weeks of the season. Do you think that it kind of knocked the whole team back on its heels when your offense wasn't able to get a first down and then they scored so quickly? Um, I think it knocked everybody. I mean, I think it was the, the attitude at that point was this is what we thought was going to happen. That's what we need to change. I mean, there's a bad I mean, We struggled throwing the ball downfield a little bit. Uh, here's their fourth play from scrimmage, and we blow a, we blow a coverage. We cover two where we got two deep half safeties. We've seen that route concept a hundred times from our offensive practice, and we cut a guy on the post free. There's no. I mean, look here. There's nobody within ten yards of him. That's just. Over anxiety, the first guy, the number two guy on the point came out. We jump him man to man and they throw it over our head. I mean, that's just, it's too bad. Now we got pressure on the quarterback all day. After we settle down, you're gonna see some better clips here of coverage. They had a hard time. Joey Noble, Joey Noble could be as successful in the SEC as he is in our league. Joey Noble and Cody Moon in the backfield meeting at the quarterback there. Here you get more pressure this time from Jake Saltonstall. And, and pretty good coverage by Tavian. He was there, we get it down, we get him to punt the ball, we get off the field. Uh, this has got to change, and we'll probably see somebody else back there this week because Manning's got to catch that ball. That, that, that gives up. There's 15 hidden yards right there that they didn't earn. We let the ball get on the ground. Uh, he thought he lost it in the sun, but we've got to make that play. Here's the Aaron Dumas who you talked about. This is that drive. I mean, that's, there's an opportunity to spread him out, and Aaron hits the hole hard. They had a hard time tackling him. The first guy didn't get him down. I mean, there, there's, there's a nice job right there by the offensive line. I mean, look at Kyle Stapley right there just creating a little hole. It's just fascinating to me how well the, the running backs were able to see such a small gap like that and take advantage of it. Here's Dumas again, another first down. You have to believe that the gap's going to be there. You have to hit it hard sometimes straight ahead and hope that those guys will get their guys out of the way and, and hit the gap. Here, this one right here, this is, this is lack of detail by our punt team. The ball's on the ground, we relax, we think he's not going to take it. And then we get lucky that they call holding right here because this is going to be a 75-yard touchdown on a punt return when we've got four guys around the ball waiting for them to relax. Now, if you watch college football on Saturday, you saw a very similar situation in the Mississippi State Memphis game, and it cost Mississippi State the football game. So just relaxing, letting your guard down, thinking that he's not gonna field it, and all of a sudden he takes off. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a one, it's, it's gutsy by him. You have, to be, you have to be brave to do it, but what'd they have to lose? They were up by 21 points at that point, or 14 points at that point, and, and he took a chance and almost made a big play for him. Now your DN's fantastic. We just saw a clip of Justin Harris there as well getting into the backfield. I thought their guys up front had a hard time blocking our guys. Uh, just, we were in a 14 hole, 14 nothing hole by the time we started playing, making plays like this, like the one that the sack that you had for Justin. Uh, that, was, that was the disappointing part. Here's Joey again on a sack. Now we're gonna get a hold right here by Ronald Wilson. And this is a habit that we need to change in practice because they do it sometimes. It, it was unnecessary, you'll see it right here. Uh, on the back end, I believe we show the clip where Ronald grabs a hold of his waist right there. He's got him covered. There's no reason to hold on to him. I mean, that, that's, uh, that's frustrating. Now he's a true freshman. He'll learn from it. Um, they got a first and one right there. We held him to three uh, on the third down. They finally got the first down. And then right here, we missed three tackles. Uh, they're playing hard. Now Spiller's a really good running back. Jarek has a read. Right there, Dion should just run through the hole and hit him in the backfield. But we've got to get him on the ground and keep him out of the end zone. So a couple of opportunities there to make a tackle that you're not able to execute and uh, here in punt coverage again. Now, Andrew Barney makes a great play right here. He's got to wrap him up. But if you watch Anaya Smith, another great opportunity. He stayed on his feet. He was actually down. But if you look, Barney's the one chasing him right here. He's going to hit him from behind and get him on the ground. That's a great effort play. And Andrew Barney's going to be a really good special teams player for us and a really good football player. We got lucky right here, though. It is forearms Forearm. down. Yep. That, that made the difference. But watch Andrew. He doesn't quit. He feels Anaya Smith get up. He gets up and starts chasing him. Now, Anais Smith's a great player. Uh, here was a field goal. That was the 10 points they had in the second uh, quarter. We go down 24 0 at halftime. Uh, I mean, we didn't play good enough to give ourselves a chance to be competitive in the first five minutes of the game. The game was decided. That's unfortunate because we played a lot more competitive. I mean, you take those first 10 minutes out or five minutes out, they beat us 20 to nothing. Now, if we get make one of those plays on defense, and we score a touchdown and it's 14 to seven or it's 27, that's a completely different ball game and a completely different outlook. So we made progress, we got our tails whipped, but hopefully we'll learn from it. I wanna go back to the play made by Barney uh, because to me, that doesn't happen by accident. If you watch a Lobo practice, anytime a football is on the ground, 
It doesn't matter whether it's special teams, defense, offense. You've got guys running to the ball until the whistle is blown. And even after, go get the football. Mm -hmm. Those things happen because it's where you practice. It doesn't happen by accident. No, it's the old adage. I mean, it's not practice to, to make it perfect because nothing's going to be perfect. It's practice until you can't get it wrong. I and mean, that's a Nick, Nick, Nick Saban thing. And, and it's really true. I mean, you've got to do it over and over. It's got to become a habit. It's got to become a detailed habit. And there was a perfect example of Andrell. He knows one thing. He knows to run to the ball until the play's over. And he did a nice job getting him on the ground. Now, if you had wrapped him up early on because it was a great hit, we, I mean, we don't want to break down. We want to do exactly what he did except wrap him up. And if he wraps him up, that's an outstanding play. So we saw a few too many clips uh, about the Lobo punt coverage and giving up returns. I wanted to ask one more quick question mm -hmm. about that because – the punt average looks pretty decent. He averages over 40 yards per punt, but too many of them are coming back. Mm -hmm. What are the factors that need to change? Combination. Aaron needs to be more consistent. I mean, the good ones he hits, they're fair catching, but when he doesn't hit them good, their line drives, and they get a big advantage on the return. We've got to fix that. We've got to put the right guys out there. Right now, we're trying to play a football game with about, really, the offense has 11. We use a couple guys on offense, uh, on special teams. The majority of them are defensive guys. But we're getting about 16 guys to play three quarters of a football game. That's not enough. We've got to find guys that can contribute on special teams. And if we can do that, we'll be better. All right. Second half highlights on the other side. The Lobo Coaches Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. We're back on your Lobo Coaches Show with Danny Gonzalez, the head football coach at New Mexico. I'm Robert Portnoy. Time to look at second half highlights of the Lobo's trip to Kyle Field to take on Texas A&M. You know, at halftime, we told them to, to stop worrying about the scoreboard and just play ball. Uh, there's great effort right there by Taven Combs. Dante's got to have better coverage. It was about two more minutes into this quarter where we started covering them a lot better. And other than one drive at the end of the third quarter, uh, I thought we played pretty good on defense. Now, there are no moral victories. There's no excuses. The, the positives that you find here of some of the things we did hopefully will help them believe in what they're doing. But... Don't anybody get it wrong. We got our tails whipped, and we've got to get better so that that doesn't happen. I mean, that was a good kickoff return. Our kickoff return team was okay on the two returns that we had. We got them past the 30-yard line. There's another great play by Joey uh, Noble. I mean, they had a hard time blocking him all day. They had a hard time blocking uh, a lot of our scheme changes up front. I mean, schemes up front. So Noble with the sack there. I love the toughness from Manny Logan Green on that kickoff return. He took a shot. He picked up more positive yards. There's penetration from Cody Moon again from the linebacking spot. And a great play from Tavian Combs. We stayed in coverage uh, on the scramble drill when, when Cody missed the sack. And then to get his foot down inbounds with the ball, I mean, I told the referees if, if they weren't going to review it, we wanted a timeout because uh, upstairs they did a good job and told us that his foot was in. They did the right thing, reviewed it, and we got the ball right there. He has just been spectacular at times, a second year player, and um, we've seen him make a, a pick to seal a game already this year, and that was one of the best defensive plays against the fifth ranked team in the country. No, it was a great play. I mean, we had great pressure on the quarterback. He threw a, he threw a ball that he shouldn't have thrown, and we made a really good play. There was a good first down pickup by the offense right there. Now, this one was disappointing. They called intentional grounding right here. I mean, we're in field goal range. We were gonna try a field goal right there. It was fourth down, but they knocked us back, so we had to punt the ball. Uh, this is the drive that they scored their touchdown on in the second half. Uh, really disappointed because I didn't think we played physical. I mean, we had to call the guys up on the sideline and have a little conversation of, look, that, that's not who we are. And you're either going to lay down and, and let them just score 50 or you're going to compete and fight. And I thought they competed and fight for the, in the fourth quarter. I mean, right here, that's a mental mistake. If, if Jarek doesn't look back, he's going to knock that guy. That was a great catch by Muhammad. But we should be able to get that ball out when they're having to make acrobatic catches like that. Now, one of the things you mentioned going into this particular game was that you hoped to do a little bit more substituting on defense. Were you able to work in a few more players on defense? Um, we did up front with, the, with a normal rotation. Towards the end of the game, um, Matthias Bertram got in, Tavian had some hamstring problems. Um, not as much as we wanted in the secondary. Now, we got more guys to play, but it wasn't because uh, it, it was a substitution because guys were, Tavian was hurt. I mean, he. He was able to come back, uh, I mean, sorry, he was able to come in to get treatment this morning. We think he'll be able to play, but he couldn't go anymore in the fourth quarter. And here's a nice job by Matthias right there, getting pressure on the quarterback. They had to throw it away. Um, I mean, they went out there, the guys we had out there were fighting and doing a really good job. There's another sack right here. This was Jake Saltstall and Ray Luatele. I mean, we had pressure on him uh, all day. I mean, that's why the first two plays were so disappointing. What about um, the way that, that Terry operated? We talked about the fact that he didn't have as much time as he had had the first two weeks. 
um, but it, he didn't appear to be as sharp either. No, I think I think that was the, the brunt of it. I mean, they they high load him early on the game because they beat both our tackles, and that made a big dif a, a big difference in his comfort ability to play, uh, sit back in the pocket and throw the ball. This this drive right here in particular, after the interception, which I thought was pass interference, but they didn't call it. This is exactly what we were talking about. Our offense, I mean, our defense getting out there and fighting. Uh, they have the ball first and goal. I mean, first down on the twenty yard line to go in to score to give them more points. We hold them to a field goal attempt that they botched because of a high snap. That's a great job by the defense. I mean, they went out there, they competed, they stopped them from in the red zone, and, and that's a uh, that's encouraging. And you saw a young player from Cleveland High School right here in Rio Rancho, Deion Hunter, get a good hit on their quarterback. Really there. good. I mean, it, we, we were disguising blitzes. Uh, they weren't able to adjust the protection, and, and we got a, good, a few good licks on the quarterback right there. Now here at the back end of the game, in terms of the way that the offensive line performed and the ability to move the ball a little bit on the ground, what did you think? There's an example right there of Luke actually cutting up to getting vertical, whereas in the first half he lost two yards on that same play. There were a couple of those that he could have had, eight or nine. Great toughness right here by Bobby Cole because we miss on the perimeter the the corner and he comes up and he and I love that stuff. I mean you've got to be physical, you got to be aggressive, you got to take your shots. Bobby Cole stayed up. They had too many guys around the ball for us to have success right there. But I mean there were some positives in the way our kids fought. That's not good enough to win around here. That's not good enough to be competitive. There are no moral victories. We've got to prepare better. We've got to believe in what we're doing. And I can't wait till 2023 when we go back to Kyle Field. I can't wait. I'm just, the, the attitude will be completely different. And if it's not, then, then we're not making the progress I think we'll make by then. Coach said the effort was terrific. He also said, that, said, also said that there could have been some things schematically the Lobos might have done differently. What about from an execution standpoint, just in terms of doing the things that you wanted to do in the game? Um, where were the Lobos on that front? Early on, not good. On either side of the ball. That's why Texas A&M had so much success early. As the game progressed... It was hit and miss. There were, goods and, there were good things and bad things. Not consistent enough. Um, we, we need to improve on that aspect. We were playing a really good team. I mean, they're the fifth ranked team in the country. There's talk they're going to be a CFP team. Are they a CFP team? I don't know if they are or not. We'll have an idea after they play Arkansas this week because Arkansas is playing really good football. And that will be a good matchup. Uh, Coach Fisher was, was kind after the game. Um, I don't want coaches to be kind. I'd rather them be pissed off. But I thought we got after them up front on defense. Uh, I thought we could have played a little bit better on offense. We could have given them a better chance schematically when we realized what was working. So we've got to do, we've got to do a better job as coaches uh, as well as players. Lobos actually have Texas A&M scheduled twice more out in the future, and as Coach G mentioned, the next time, 2023. Okay, time for us to take a timeout. When we come back on the other side, we preview the Lobos interstate rivalry, the matchup with UTEP in El Paso next. The Lobo Coaches Show is presented by Toyota. Let's go places. We're back to wrap up this edition of your Lobo Coaches Show with the head football coach at UNM, Danny Gonzalez. I'm Robert Portnoy and Coach T. So a 34-0 loss at a and and now it's back rivalry time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the renewal of the interstate rivalry. Just across the border sits UTEP, and I know you're excited to play the Miners. I am. You know, it's a great rivalry. I mean, we've won 42, they've won 33. I think there's five ties in there. Uh, that's a great that's a great rivalry. I mean, we, we should play this game more often. I really do believe that because, uh, I mean, as a kid, I went to the basketball game in the pit, the infamous paper cup. I mean, we were going to beat UTEP, and one of our silly fans threw a paper cup as one of their guys is shooting a free throw. He missed it, got another attempt at it, and made it. They won the ball game. So I think it's a great rivalry. Okay. The last time the Lobos went to the Sun Bowl and took on UTEP in El Paso was 2013. Also happens to be the last time the Lobos went to overtime. New Mexico came out on top. Now, you don't want a tight game if you can avoid it. You'd rather blow them out. But a W's a W. Doesn't matter how you get it. A W's a W, and I expect a, a really good football game on Saturday. So the common opponent, New Mexico State. Both the Lobos and the Miners have beaten New Mexico State. What have you seen from that tape? Uh, I saw they whooped them at home in Las Cruces. We didn't whoop New Mexico State up here, so I guess you can give the advantage to UTEP. But we get to play the game on Saturday night, so it'll be a whole lot of fun. They're a good football team. They're, they're, uh, they'll be well prepared. Dana Dimmel's a really good football coach. They've made really good improvement the three years he's been there because when he, when he took that job, they weren't a very good football team. Um, they've changed that corner, and they believe in what they're doing. So a very confident football team's coming up here. And, I mean, sorry, we're going down there, and it'll be a really good football game. All right. Operationally, logistically, this is a bus trip. What's different in terms of the preparation and the run-up and then actually getting to UTEP and getting your team ready? 
it's a short bus trip. It, I mean, it's uh, four hours on bus. We'll stop in Socorro, eat a little bit of lunch, go down there, and then the game preparation will be the same. It's not a big deal. Okay, you talked about wanting your team to be physical. You've always talked about that being a hallmark of your teams. You want to go in there and do that. Comparing the A&M effort to what you want to see against UTEP, what's the biggest difference? Our belief system. Uh, we'll go into the UTEP game believing that we can win the game. I don't think we did that on Saturday. Uh, UTEP's going to go into the game believing they're going to win the game. I promise you they marked this on their calendar and said, you know what, there's a W. So it's two teams that believe in what they're doing. They believe they can win the game, which makes for a great competitive environment. And you want your offense, obviously, to produce better. It had been so good over the first two weeks. Um, what about Terry Wilson, the, both the pass game and the run game, in improving against the Miners? I know how disappointed Terry was after the game. I got a text from him, and so... Uh, I anticipate Terry will have a good game on Saturday night. I know this. He'll be well prepared. He'll do the right things during the week to give us a chance, and we'll go out there and fight. Do you think you can get pressure on their quarterback like you did against the Aggies? Um, with the right attitude, our kids, I mean, we can get pressure on anybody. Uh, we've had good success the first three weeks. I mean, we played one of the best offensive lines in the country, and they had a hard time blocking our guys. So if Joey and, and Justin can continue to get the pressure with the four-man rush that we're getting, and then we do a good job disguising our blitzes, we can get to the quarterback. Still like where your team is after three weeks? Um, I like the progress we're making in our program. Very disappointed about Saturday. It was all a belief system. We're going to have to play with those guys. And we'll get another opportunity. But the opportunity that matters is this Saturday night against UTEP. Coach, you can't wait to watch you play the Miners. Thank you. I appreciate it. Can't wait. And hope we have a good contingency come down from Albuquerque because it's a short drive. So long, everybody. Go Lobos.